All right, we've looked at ways to solve and look for zeros graphically. Uh, now we're going to focus on solving algebraically. Okay, and there's two methods we're going to start with. One is factoring and the other taking square roots. Okay, so again, there it is. X-intercepts, zeros, roots, then we set the equation equal to zero. So if you ever see solve or determine the solution, x squared plus 5x plus 6 equals 0. Equals 0. That's your tip off that we're talking about zeros, which means we're talking about roots, which means we're talking about x intercepts, right? Or the solutions when f of x equals 0. We're talking about roots, zeros, x intercepts. We can pull all this from a graph. But we can also do it algebraically, and we're going to look at these two approaches today. Okay, so if I have x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 1, my two choices, how do I know which one to use? Well, it says if there is a b term, then I'm going to use factoring. If there's not a b term, use square roots. So we're thinking back to ax squared plus bx plus c. It's this middle term that we're looking for. When I see this, I can label A, B, C. So I'm going to use factoring to solve. The first thing we need to keep in mind is that it must equal 0 in order to use factoring to solve. So I'm going to take my equation, x squared minus 5x plus 7 equals 1. And I'm going to make that be 0 by subtracting 1. x squared minus 5x plus 6 equals 0. And now we're ready to factor. So I'm going to look at a is 1, b is negative 5, c is 6. a times c is 1 times 6. I need factors of 6 that combine to negative 5, so we're going to use negative 2 and negative 3. So I can write x minus 2 times x minus 3 equals 0. Well, then we get to use something called the zero product property, which basically says anything times 0 is 0. What that means is I can split these up, x minus 2 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. And when I solve these, right, because if I can make this be 0, it doesn't matter what that is because 0 times it is going to give me 0. Same thing here. If I can make this be 0, it doesn't matter what that is because the whole thing is going to equal 0. Well, x minus 2 equals 0. That means x equals 2. x minus 3 equals 0. That means x equals 3. And I now have two places, two solutions. Tells me my graph crosses the x-axis in two places. Okay. Next one, 4x squared equals 64. There's no b term, so I'm going to use square roots. Important in square roots is that we want to isolate the x squared to take square roots of each side. So when I look at 4x squared equals 64, I need to get this x squared, squared term isolated. I'm going to divide by 4 to get those to cancel. And this says x squared equals 64 divided by 4 is 16. Now that I have the x squared by itself, take the square root of both sides and x squared equals. This is something you've got to be careful about because remember, 4 squared gives me 16, but so does negative 4. So this is where the symbol comes from, literally say plus or minus 4. Squared shouldn't be there. So we can say that x equals positive 4, 
and x equals negative 4. I know that this parabola crosses the x-axis at negative 4 and at positive 4. Okay. So again, sometimes it's not straight up. Here, solve this. Right? Determine the roots, which means we're going to set it equal to 0. And I've got y equals 2x squared plus 10x plus 12. So I could graph it and check. Or I can set this equal to 0 and solve. Because we're practicing algebraic, that's what we're going to do. So when I say 2x squared plus 10x plus 12 equals 0, Okay. There's a greatest common factor. I can divide the 2 out. That leaves 2 times x squared plus 5x plus 6 equal to 0. We just factor what's remaining. A is 1, B is 5, C is 6, A times C, 1 times 6. And now I need it to equal positive 5. So now we're going to use positive 2 and positive 3. And we can write x plus 2 times x plus 3 equals 0. When I split those to solve, x plus 2 equals 0 and x plus 3 equals 0. x will equal negative 2, and x will equal negative 3. Okay. So I know that on my graph, it goes through negative 2 and negative 3. So this one's written in vertex form, which we could multiply it out and get a b value, but it's going to be a lot simpler if we just solve using square roots determine the zeros means set this equal to zero and solve so two times x minus three squared minus eighteen equals zero i'm trying to isolate the squared term so i need to get rid of everything else so i'm going to add eighteen two times x minus three squared equals eighteen Isolating the squared term, so I need to get rid of the multiplication. x minus 3 squared equals 9. All that's over here is a squared term, something squared. That's it. So we're going to take the square root, and this leaves x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 9 is 3. When I continue solving for x and I add 3, I end up with x equals 3 plus or minus 3. I need to go ahead and figure out what that means. So we're going to take this plus or minus and we're going to split it. 3 plus 3, 3 minus 3. 3 plus 3 equals 6, 3 minus 3 equals 0. So I know that my zeros happen, it crosses the graph at 0 and at positive 6.